In East Timor, the Lord's Day is always religiously respected. Every Sunday in Dili, the capital, the cathedral is packed with worshippers. With the exception of the Vatican, East Timor is the most Catholic country in the world, with 97% of the population practicing Catholicism. A former Portuguese colony, East Timor is located in the far east of the Indonesian archipelago. When the Portuguese left in November 1975, this Catholic enclave declared its independence. This unilateral declaration was unacceptable to neighboring Muslim Indonesia, which annexed the small territory almost immediately afterwards. This marked the beginning of a particularly bloody occupation that was not to end until 1999. With more than 150,000 people killed, the fight for independence cost the lives of almost a quarter of the country's population one of the deadliest conflicts of the 20th century. During these years of darkness, priests gave shelter, hid and cared for independence fighters on a massive scale. This commitment explains the major influence of the church in East Timor today. But in recent years, a number of scandals have regularly tarnished the institution's image. This is the testimony of one of the 17 victims who had the courage to denounce the pedophilic acts of an American priest, Father Richard Dashbach. Father Dashbach arrived in the small Indonesian enclave of Oikusi in the 1960s and set up an orphanage there in 1991. It was in this institution that he raped young girls on numerous occasions over a period of almost 30 years. In March 2018, Increasingly unable to bear the pressure of the rumors that were piling up against him, the man of the cloth finally confessed to his superiors the extent of his crimes in a chilling letter of confession. In receipt of this letter, the Vatican relieved the American priest of his duties. Three years later, in 2021, the Timorese court sentenced him to 12 years in prison. This is the first time in the country's history that a clergyman has been put behind bars for paedophilic acts. <laughs> We went to the orphanage located on the heights of the enclave of Oikusi, an isolated place out of sight. Lily worked for a long time with Father Richard to look after the hundreds of children who passed through this institution. I 
and this one's picture from our on December 2012. Okay. Like this. Where is the uh, Father uh, Richard? Yeah, Father Richard in here. Okay. And that's make Father Richard like a uh, uh, very love all the kids, love all the widow, for, like a woman when the husband die and you know. Mm. No family to support them okay. and their family. It was very close to people, kids or yeah. parents. For a long time, Father Richard worked like a office, small office in here. And this is Father Richard Breton. Are you sad that now he's in jail? Yeah, I'm very sad. I'm yeah. very, very sad because I'm stay for a long time now. Mm. 27 years I'm stay with him and I'm very, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm very, very love him a person. He was never sleeping with, with no. alone with a girl, with a young girl. No, that sometimes when we talk together with Father Richard, sometimes kids coming for here, mm -hmm. like hey, hello, Father. They're always coming, coming. Okay, but for you, he's not a sexual criminal. I not see. I yeah. I'm very very complete. I don't like to hear uh, have yeah. a, like a abuse sexual or mm -hmm. make something bad. But supervisors like Lily were at the heart of a well-oiled system designed to satisfy Father Richard's paedophilic impulses. Despite the evidence, and despite Father Richard's own confessions, Many people here still defend his honor. Especially as the American clergyman is seen as a national hero, right up to the very top of the state. Chanana Guzmao is the former leader of the armed wing of the Revolutionary Front for the Independence of East Timor. He was an unknown hero. He founded an orphanage like he met many, many times the militias, um, the, 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 the Indonesian soldiers, and he was very tough. No, we, uh, we don't surrender, etc., etc. And that is why he was um, an unknown her hero. In the 1990s, Chanana Guzmao spent seven years in Indonesian jails. He went on to become Timor's first elected president following the country's independence in 2002. To show his support for Father Richard, the former president did not hesitate to visit Dili prison twice to celebrate the pedophile priest's birthday. So for you, his place is not to be in, in jail? No. No. And you will continue to bring... I will continue and he is bring a cake every, every, every year. We saw that uh, there was like a good link between few, few organizations, defending women, defending girls, etc., etc. Maybe they are receiving money. I don't say that they receive. The problem is the problem is, when it is violation... Denial, culpable blindness or bad faith. This type of reaction is widely shared in the upper echelons 
as in the case of Martinho da Silva, a former priest who has become an influential advisor in the circles of power. I think uh, completely this case must be, must be like um, abolish or this case must be, you know, cancel, okay. nullified. Okay. And his name must be restored. He followed the rule. But if they have this real proof, then you are, but you cannot put, use that yeah, fake uh, proof. You cannot, just because you hate the Catholic Church in Timor-Leste, you cannot do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was surprised that uh, this kind of things happen in the church. The fear that the entire institution will be discredited is often what explains the unwavering support for Father Richard. All the more so, as another even more well-known and influential cleric has also seen his image seriously tarnished by similar cases of paedophilia. Monsignor Bello, longtime head of the country's church and even winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 1996. You have no opinion about Bishop Bello? I uh, yes, no. Because for you, it's just rumors? I have no comment. Yeah. He's not a sexual criminal for you? No comment. Yes, no comment. At the end of Mass, there is little time to talk about the local icon. Monsignor Carlos Jimenez Bello is an independence hero. It was he who succeeded in publicizing the conflict and enabling the world to locate Timor on a map. His courageous support for the independence movement made him the embodiment of rebellion against the invaders. At the Resistance Museum, the portrait of the national hero is still prominently displayed at the entrance. Also on display are the personal effects of demonstrators who died on the 12th of November, 1991 a tragic date in the country's history. That day, thousands of Timorese people gathered peacefully in the Santa Cruz Cemetery. They were paying tribute to one of their own, killed by the Indonesian army. The suppression was relentless. 250 Timorese people fell to the bullets and blows of the occupying forces. Cemetery, public cemetery that uh, in 1991, 12 November, Indonesian soldiers shoot down our people, especially the young people. More of us uh, died, and more of them uh, was uh, 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 arrested to the jail, uh, to the hospital. Gregorio Saldana was at the cemetery that day as organizer of the event. Today, he chairs the 12th of November committee, which commemorates the victims every year. When the, the massacre uh, happened, Bishop Bello uh, came to, to, to visit the cemetery, and Bishop Bello uh, went to hospital to visit us. And Bishop Bello planned to open his door in his residence to protect the victims of uh, massacre. For you, it's not guilty about this accusation. According to you, I don't want to comment uh, about uh, the, the the process of judicial uh, accusation because we don't interfere to the problem. As a um, uh, member of Catholic in Timor Leste, we have the uh, obligation to manifest moral support to Bishop Bell. Only this one. Yet the country's former bishop and Nobel Peace Prize winner is accused of multiple rapes and sexual assaults, this time on young boys. In 2002, as soon as the first suspicions against him arose, Monsignor Bello was discreetly exiled by the Vatican, first to Mozambique, then to Portugal, officially for health reasons. In 2020, the Holy See strengthened its sanctions. The former prelate was now banned from residing in his own country 
and also from coming into contact with miners. Despite all the evidence against him, his aura has remained intact and can be felt around every corner. The Minor Seminary of Our Lady of Fatima welcomes hundreds of students every year. Paolo has been teaching Latin and sport at the seminary for over 10 years. Uh, this is a place, is the name of the place is uh, another Price Garden. Okay. For Bishop Bero? Yes, for Bishop Bero. By our history, all the people know that uh, the contribution of the church in East Timor is very important to build the nation. Um, just now, I, I can say that uh, this time, the Catholic education is better than education in East Timor. So all the people want to their, their son or their doctor to, to come in Catholic school, especially in seminary. Carlos Bello never missed the first day of school or any of the religious celebrations held here. Bishop Bello is very popular to the East Timor people because we, Bishop Bello is very kindly people. Not only like uh, the church leader, but for all the people, especially for the poor people here, poor men here, because he's very near to the people. So all people in East Timor is feel that uh, like their father. During these ceremonies, Carlos Bello would take the opportunity to extend invitations to young boys to join him at his house in the evening. Most of the events took place within the bishopric, where he lived for 14 years. We tried to contact Bishop Bello on several occasions, to no avail. His successor, Cardinal Virgilio, also did not respond to our requests for an interview but we were able to talk to his private secretary using a discreet camera. You, you don't have uh, any kind of uh, authorized to investigate someone. You are a journalist. Yeah. You only talk about the reality, the fact. But in East Timor, we are still live our faith as a normal people. Mm. So uh, better not to put these idea, new things of to the innocent people in the yeah. out. I'm sorry. You, no, you, it's it's, you okay. are, it's, it's, it's your understand. job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Better not to push you to the limit, uh, out of the limit when you are doing your job. Because I know uh, philanthropic people, Bill Gates, George Soros, and the other people, they have money, they give you to push, yeah, to go to the... I mean, it's not because of Bill Gates, if the decision decided to send no. Bishop Bello in Portugal. Yeah, no. And because uh, everybody yeah. knew it was a public secret that in Timor, Bishop it's, Bello had bad behavior with kids. It is your impression. We don't have to share something without this veracity, okay? Investigating sexual violence in Timor is still very complicated and frowned upon. Antonio Sampaio learned this the hard way. A journalist for the Portuguese news agency Lusa for 20 years, he was the first to report pedophilic abuse by the local church. I think uh, because of that shock and because in the, the, the initial days of the coverage, the Timorese media mostly ignored the issue and didn't really report it. Um, uh, Lusa and our coverage, which was one-on-one -on -one journalism, there's nothing there to be questioned about the journalism that was done, um, led to some people um, making threats on social media. Um, um, there was people saying that they were going to organize groups to come and stone my house. Fortunately, none of that happened. It is clear that when you attack a figure like, uh, or when, when you come out with comments and news about a figure like Shimens Bello, there are people that are not gonna like it. When the news came out, there was even journalists in Timor that replaced their profile picture with a picture of uh, Shimens Bello. 
Um, there was a lot of support around the bishop. There was uh, even some people that were trying to see if they could identify the victims because they were sort of accusing them of being unpatriotic, of destroying a national hero. Popular support for Archbishop Bello has been reinforced by the support once again found at the highest level of the state. Jose Ramos Orta has been president of East Timor since 2022, a former comrade in arms of Monsignor Bello. In 1996, he won the Nobel Peace Prize with him. The current president still doesn't approve of the Vatican's sidelining of the national hero. Il a eu un rôle euh, très très important. Il représentait l'Église, mais aussi euh, euh, tout le peuple de, de Timor. Mais il y avait beaucoup de prêtres et tous ils ont fait beaucoup euh, pour protéger les gens qui sont persécutés par le régime, euh, les gens pauvres. surpris mais c'est la vie euh, sont des, des choses qui arrivent euh, c'était euh, très dur pour nous pour les peuples timorais vous espérez que monseigneur bello revienne un jour au timor euh, absolument pourquoi mmh. pas oui j'espère sa place elle est plus ici qu'au oui. portugal non euh, c'est surtout à voir avec euh, avec euh, le Vatican, avec le Saint-Siège et la décision s'il euh, pourrait venir ou non au Timor, oui, bien sûr, euh, les gens euh, aimeraient bien l'accueillir à Timor, oui. Qu'est-ce que vous avez pensé, vous, quand vous avez entendu les, les accusations qu'il y avait contre lui Vous avez réagi comme Non, non, je ne vais pas commenter ça. Ouais, 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 ouais. At all levels, the code of silence continues. Yet the silence surrounding these stories of pedophilia is not only linked to the influence of the church in society. Josh Trinidad is an anthropologist and specialist in sexual violence. Uh, the Timorese society in general, they still don't see pedophilia as a big issue. It's not like in the West, you know. In Australia or in the UK, if you are a pedophile, it's like, you know, really bad. For example, I'm talking to my, like, educated Timorese friend who studied overseas, like US, they come back, they're still looking at um, minors as sexual object. Like, they're talking about it, it's just something normal. And then I said, are you crazy? This is minor. Minor is a big crime, you know? Um, I mean, you can have sex, a consensus with, um, with um, adult, but with minor, no. Uh, so from that then I, underst um, I understood that a lot of people still don't understand the issue of, of, of pedophilia. According to our information, a dozen other priests are accused of sexual abuse in Timor. Like Bishop Bello, to date, they have never been prosecuted. Janana Guzmao, the recent winner of the legislative elections, is to become the country's new prime minister. The release of Father Richard will be one of his priorities.